Hello everyone. Sorry that I didn't do one on Monday. I was just not good. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I'll do two today. Oh, the camera's wobbling a lot. Ooh, stop wobbling. This is The Treasure Hunter's Tale. Um, I started reading it to my husband while we were on holiday because we had a tiny holiday again and um, got quite far. <laughs> so I had to go back to where we were. Okay, chapter 13. Oh, I don't know why I was about to turn that off. That's embarrassing. Okay, I forgot how to do this. That night, as Miss Beloved of the King lay on her cabin bed, she heard a scuffling sound and then silence. She was sore and weary from her day of toil and hardship. The pirates had eaten the food she had prepared and were now lying about the deck in various degrees of intoxication. Oh, dear King, she prayed through her tears. I do not know what your plan is for me here. Indeed, I confess that I struggle to see your hand in this at all. I'm your child, your beloved. Oh, please help me. She fell into a fitful sleep. The next evening, after another day of hard work in the galley and very little fresh air, for she was only permitted out of the kitchen when she served the food, she lay on her cabin bed again and prayed. Oh, my king, why are you not responding to my call for help? I thought I'd be rescued by now. I'm your beloved child. Please rescue me. Once again, she struggled to get to sleep, for her worn muscles ached and she could not get into a comfortable position. She lay in the dark, staring up at the ceiling. Then she heard that scuffling sound again. What was it? Hello, she called out. Who's there? There was quiet for a few minutes and then the sound of little footsteps hurrying away. The next morning, Miss Beloved of the King found a torn piece of paper under her door. It read, Tonight I will say hello. She tucked the little piece of paper into her apron and got on with her work. There was something in that writing that made her think it was written by a child and it made her think how the little child could have arrived at the ship and under what dark circumstances and she began to feel compassion for the one she was yet to meet purely on the basis that they were there. Later that day, as she was getting the lunch ready, she began to pray. Oh, Father, I am sorry for focusing on my situation to the exclusion of all others. I suppose if I am to be here, it will not do to concentrate so much on my own misery that I forget others. So please help me to even pray for my enemies. She began praying for the one she thought sure was a child and prayed for their safety and that she would have an opportunity to talk to them about Jesus. She also prayed that nothing would prevent them from visiting her that evening. She then prayed for her dear mother and her new sister in the king, Mrs Ernest, and her family as they were at the beginning of their journey on the king's road. And she prayed for the three treasure hunters, especially Mr Newhart, who had become very dear to her. At this she began to weep, for she could not be certain she would ever see him again on this earth. Somewhat refreshed from her time of prayer, she waited to be let out of the galley so she could go on deck and serve the men. As she waited, her work done, she even found the courage to sing a little. Her voice was sweet and clear. She leant back on the kitchen surface with her arms full of the dinner tray and sang the song her mother had sung to her when she was worried about the potential of a fiery trial, if you recall. Indeed, this song had become her declaration, so determined was she to serve her king no matter what. While she was washing up later that day, she heard the men go off on one of their raids and two hours later they returned, jeering and yelling and calling for rum. She hated the smell of the drink, but dutifully took up the flagons and poured out a top for each man. Then behind her, she heard a squawk and turning around, saw that amongst their latest booty was a large silver cage with a parrot in it. One of the pirates noticed her looking at it and remarked, Got it for the silver, really, miss, but we figured having the bird on board might be fun. Where did you find it? She asked. It was the first time she had really spoken to any of them. Find it? We didn't find it, we stole it. From the town parson, if you please. Snatched it right out of his parlour. The man looked pleased with himself and took a draught of his drink and smacked his lips. Away with you, miss, he ordered, and Miss Beloved of the King obediently walked back down the stairs to the galley. Then, once her work was done, she made herself ready for her little guest, and sure enough, as she was lying on her cabin bed waiting, she heard the same familiar scuffling sound. She sat up. Is it you? she said softly. Yes, am came a little lad's voice. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you, sort of, she added, as of course the boy couldn't get into the galley any more than she could get out, what with the door being locked securely. Well, it is nice to talk. What's your name? she asked invitingly. Freddy, what's yours? Well, my name is Miss Beloved of the King, and I'm the cooking lady here. Are you a princess, miss? Miss Beloved of the King was quite surprised. 
Why would this child think she was a princess? More like a prisoner. No, why? she asked, puzzled. Well, I listen to you at night and you say, O oh, king, and then you say some stuff and then you say, I am your child. Now, I don't know much, but what I do know is a child of a king, what is a lady, is called a princess, said the little boy matter-of-factly. Miss Beloved of the King smiled to herself and then in her heart thanked God for this opportunity. Well, she began, I say that because I have been adopted into the king's family, not because of anything I have done, but because his son, Jesus, the Prince Emmanuel, has saved me from my old life and sin and bought me with his own blood. There was a long pause. Indeed, Miss Beloved of the King was about to ask if he was still there when she listened closely at the door and heard him breathing quietly. I ain't got no father nor mother, he said quietly. Nor have I been adopted, he said sadly. Miss Beloved of the King longed to hug the child, but instead she said, I am sorry to hear that, Freddy. Would you like me to adopt you? As soon as she said it, she felt a sudden swelling of love for this poor little mite, who she hadn't even seen face to face yet. Oh, yes, please, said Freddy excitedly. That would be lovely. And then maybe one day we could actually see each other and I'll run up to you and say, hello, mother. Miss Beloved of the King was delighted. Well then, she said in her most motherly voice, Freddy, my child, I'm sure it is past your bedtime. I will send you a kiss on the note you gave me. At this, she drew it from her apron and kissed it tenderly and then slipped it under the door. Now let us talk to the King and thank him for bringing us together and ask him for a good night's sleep, shall we? Freddy spoke slowly. I don't know how. And then after a little pause, could you talk to him for me, please, mother dear? Yes, of course, but we shall meet every evening before bedtime and I will help you get to know him yourself because he is a wonderful, loving king and he would love to meet you. She prayed a very simple prayer and then they said good night and the last she heard were those little scuffling feet padding away. As she lay down on her cabin bed and tried to get into a comfortable position, she thought about dear little Freddy, her son, who she had already loved dearly and prayed hard for him. As she was praying, it suddenly dawned on her that if she had never been captured and taken aboard, she would not have ever known of Freddy's existence. And so for the first time since her arrival, she actually thanked the king for bringing her there. The next day, she woke early to what sounded like someone quoting from the king's book. As she listened closer, she heard it was the parrot. Having been reared in a parson's dwelling, it would be natural for the bird to pick up certain phrases, and it stood to reason that some of these would be scripture. Oh, but what a delight it was to have these golden words spoken out loud, even in a rather unconventional way, as it had been a good while since she had heard such words spoken by anything other than her own heart. The parrot was very clear and had learnt to mimic well. Blessed are ye of the Lord, it said. The Lord be with you. She heard one of the pirates throw something at the bird. Ow, oh, shut up, he yelled. Why do we get this blessed bird? Well, I'm very grateful you did, thought Miss Beloved of the King to herself.